Hey YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how you can take your sketched out logo on paper and transform it into a finished vector logo design in Adobe Illustrator. So as you can see here, I've created my new document and I've imported my sketched logo. You can do this a number of ways. You can use a scanner, you can use a digital camera or even a smartphone. Then once you've uploaded the file to your computer, go up to File, Place, just navigate to your file and it will drop it into Illustrator. So now I'm just going to select my image, go over to my layers palette and lock this layer by clicking in this space here. I'm just going to give it a name of background. I'm then going to create a new layer and call that logo. And this is where our artwork composition is going to appear. And it's always good to lock the background layer just because we don't want to move this by accident when working on our composition. So with a lot of logos, similar to this, you can see that they're made out of shapes. If you break them down, there's lots of basic shapes that make up these more com complex shapes. So this one, for example, is made up of a hexagon. So if we go over here and we select the rectangle tool, left click and hold down and select the polygon tool. Left click anywhere on the artboard and just make sure that the sides are set to six. And then holding shift, we can scale this up proportionally, swap the fill and the stroke, and I'm just going to give it a black outline for now. And I can just increase the weight of this to about 20. There we go, so it roughly matches my sketched design. Now I just want to try and position this in place over the sketch. Just as accurately as I can. And then I'm probably going to select the direct selection tool at the top. Just make sure I select these top three anchor points. And then using the arrow keys, I'm just going to tap this down just so it's a little bit closer to the sketch design. And feel free to zoom in as well, just to make sure it's even more accurate. Now, the middle part here as well, that is also a hexagon. You can see here it would be a six-sided shape if these gaps weren't here. But So that's great. We can select this hexagon we've just created, go to Edit, Copy, Edit, and then Paste in Place. And then using either the Scale tool or by clicking one of the corners and holding Alt and Shift, we can scale that into the middle and let go. There we go. Perfect. So now we just need to create these two remaining lines here. We can select our line tool, just left click and hold shift just to keep it nice and straight. And it should remember that we've set the weight to 20 points. So it's remembered that for us. That's great. And if you've got your smart guides on, that's up in view, down to smart guides. Just make sure that's ticked. And when you move these into position, the pink lines will appear and it will all snap to place. And then you can just drag this one. And holding Alt, you'll see that this secondary arrow appears. That just implies that when you let go, it will be creating a copy. And I can just nudge that into position. So there we go. I can now switch this layer off. This is a good reason for having them on separate layers because I can switch off my composition. I can see where the gaps appear. So we've got two over here and then two on the left side. So now I can just take this line that I created and again holding Alt, create a copy. And I'm just going to make this red for now, just because if I made it, made it white, it might get a bit lost in the background while I'm working on it. Whereas red has a bit more contrast to the black, so I can clearly see where the lines are. So I just want to try and line this up. Zoom in nice and close, there we go. And then using the direct selection tool, I can just extend these out. And then I'm going to drag this holding Alt, create a copy, and do the same thing again. Just make sure it's nice and lined up. Making sure to zoom in nice and close just to get, get that accuracy. And then I can use the direct selection tool or just use the arrow keys just to nudge that down. So effectively, these red shapes 
these are going to knock through the black in a minute, which will create those gaps. So if we look at the original sketch, where these red shapes are, they will create the gaps for us. Now one last thing before we do that, you can see here that these hexagons have got slightly rounded corners, so we're just going to add those in. So if we select our outer hexagon first, go up to Effect, Stylize, down to Rounded Corners, and I think we'll set this to 5, there we go. And we'll do the same again, select the inner hexagon, and repeat the same effect. So we've got our rounded corners, that's great. So the next thing we want to do is we want to convert these strokes, these outlines, into fills, into fixed shapes. If I go into preview mode, pressing Command Y on the Mac or Control Y on the PC, you'll see the Illustrator still recognizes them as just lines with width uh, variables applied. So if I select everything and go up to Object, Expand Appearance, okay, so that's expanded the rounded corners. I'm just going to do that again. Leave Fill and Stroke ticked and click OK. There we go. So now if I go back into preview mode, you can see that it's gone from being a stroke, being an outline, to being a shape with a fill. So if I select this, you can't change the weight anymore. You can add a weight to it, but Illustrator doesn't recognize it as a stroke. It's now a solid shape with a fill. So next what we're going to do is we're going to select the two red shapes, go over to the Pathfinder palette and select the top left one, that's Unite. And this will join these two shapes together, so it will be recognized as one. And then I'm going to select all the black shapes, hold Shift just to select these two additional ones here. And I'll go into preview mode so you can see what happens, but we want to join all the individual black shapes into one single shape. So when I click Unite, you'll see here that all those kind of divides between the individual shapes disappears, and the black one is now a shape that I can move around as one. Now just to make sure that all those individual shapes are definitely going to behave as one shape, we can go up to Object, Compound Path, and Make, and do this again for the red shapes as well. An example of how a compound path works is effectively it joins shapes together that may or may not be touching and forms them together as one shape. So Illustrator will treat them as one shape. For example, if I were to add a gradient to these two red shapes before making them a compound path, it would apply the gradient individually to each shape. However, once they are now a compound path, if I add the gradient, the gradient will run through both of the shapes and it will treat them as one single shape, even though they are separate to us and to the eye, it will treat them as separate shapes. Uh, it will treat them as one shape, rather. Even though to us they are separate, it will treat them as one shape. So now we've done that, the only other thing that remains to do is to select everything. So the, these are our two elements now. We're selecting the black and we're selecting the red. The red is on top of the black, which is exactly what we want. Because now when we go over to the Pathfinder palette, we can select the second one in from the top left, which is minus front. And that will effectively knock that out of the shape behind. So we can switch this on and off now, and we can see that we've recreated our shape. And the best thing about having this on a separate layer is I can now turn off the background. So all the, the sketch work and the gridded guides and everything, it just disappears and I'm left with my clean finished product. And I can also go and add some color to this if I wish. And there we go. We've taken our sketch of an initial logo concept and transformed it into a finished vector logo design. As always, guys, leave any questions or comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Oh,